Over the last few years, under the last government and under this government, we have had the most horrific onslaught. 100,000 jobs have gone across our membership already. We've had pay freezes, we've got closures of offices, reductions in services and attacks on our pensions. And this ballot is about giving us another weapon in our armoury to try and defend ourselves from those attacks. That's why it's important that so many people vote. And that's why we're asking two questions in the ballot. One is to give general support for our overall political campaigning strategy. But the second one is to do something quite radical. It's to give us the ability, in exceptional circumstances, to consider standing or supporting a candidate in an election. What we've already done is set up a parliamentary group in Westminster. We did that a number of years ago. It's a very effective way of getting our issues raised in the Westminster Parliament. We followed that up by also setting up parliamentary groups in the Welsh Assembly, the Scottish Parliament and the Northern Ireland Assembly. And it's given the Union a real standing and won us the respect of many people because they understand that we want to take our issues to the heart of the political establishment. We've had many successes already as a result of that. John Macdonald, for example, the chair of our parliamentary group, has raised numerous issues for us in Parliament and by working with other MPs it has made a difference. But what this ballot says is that's not enough. It wasn't enough just to have the parliamentary groups and it wasn't enough just to do our Make Your Vote Count campaign which we started in 2007 where we asked every candidate in an election where they stood on the key issues and we published their answers to our members. We then said to people use your vote depending on what your candidate has said. That was a further step forward but if all the candidates give broadly similar answers it shows there's a limit to what sharing information can achieve. Let me give you a practical example. If you live in a constituency where the local hospital is going to close, or the job centre or the tax office is going to close, and there's a lot of cuts on services, and all the politicians standing in, for example, a by-election, support those closures, tell us that there's no alternative to cuts, then we think it would be a very progressive thing if a local person from the community were to stand in an election against a hospital closure. I'll give you another example. Under the Labour government, the post office was going to be privatised. It was being taken forward by the Labour cabinet member who was in Wolverhampton. He supported post office privatisation. So did the Liberals, so did the Conservatives. We think it would have been a good thing had a postal worker or someone else given the electorate the chance to vote to defend a public service. So what this is really about is intervening in the right circumstances in order to build political pressure to support our campaigning efforts. And anyone who's seen some of the recent elections in Britain, I think, would accept that you should never underestimate the importance, for example, of by-elections to give you the ability to raise political issues and get national coverage for it which can only help in our campaign to defend our members and their communities. All the attacks we face are political decisions. And if by being politically neutral it means we don't have anything to say about these things or we don't want to campaign against them, that clearly would be absurd. PCS is a trade union, it's not a political party. We don't want the ability to stand in 650 parliamentary constituencies so that we can win the election and Janice Godrich, our president, can become prime minister. What we want is to have targeted interventions that can take forward our campaigning issues. So we will only do this in exceptional circumstances. We will not be affiliating to any political party. We will not be asking members to increase their subs. All of this will come out of the political fund that members overwhelmingly voted for a number of years back. The other question is also critical because that asks people to endorse our overall political strategy. Political intervention is not just about elections, it is all the year round. So that's why, as part of this process, we want to develop constituency coordinators that will give us an all the year round presence. And part of that will mean that any decision to stand a candidate is actually taken on the intelligence we gather over a period of time. We will still make anti-racist, anti-fascist campaigning the cornerstone of much of what we do. 
and we will work closely with those people campaigning uh, against fascism to ensure that this complements the campaigning that they do with us rather than becomes a hindrance. Utilising the Make Your Vote Count campaign uh, was ultimately, I think, very successful. We had a big letter writing campaign to MPs during the uh, course of the consultations on the closure of land registry offices, culminated in a fantastic lobby of Parliament with over 250 members turning up and a whole host of MPs. Ultimately, it resulted in saving three of the offices that were earmarked for closure. Campaigns like the London Living Wage are immensely important, becoming increasingly important to PCS. The Mayor of London, in response to a union campaign, has tried to make London a London Living Wage area. It's helped us because it's identified politicians that we can work with and also politicians and political parties that don't support the line that we're trying to take. It is important that we do try and encourage local candidates who do agree to PCS's views. We've got privatisation trials going ahead in contact centres at the moment and it has been hard to get local support from our local MPs. There's been an attempt by the Identity and Passport Service to cut jobs at the Newport office, the wider community in Newport and in South Wales. Uh, we're absolutely outraged by the decision to close what is one of the biggest employers in that city. To have had a candidate standing in an election at that time on an anti-cuts ticket would have been extremely helpful. The government decided to close down the Sustainable Development Commission and sack people. If we'd have had parliamentary representatives willing to take a stand for what effectively is a green agenda they were supposed to support, those jobs might have been saved and the ongoing important work that they were doing in terms of ensuring government was sustainable would have still continued to have momentum. We're beyond the point where we can stay politically neutral, especially you know, given the attacks on us by this government. That's not politically neutral. If people vote yes in this ballot to both the questions, if we add it to our parliamentary groups, our Make Your Vote Count, our all the year round involvement in politics, and exceptionally the ability to stand or support candidates, it means that we have a political strategy that is about constantly raising all of the issues that over time we think will start building pressure that is going to be to our advantage. This is part of the same campaign to defend our pensions and our jobs. It just gives us another weapon that we can use. So I want to urge everyone to ensure that members are aware of all of the arguments. We involve them in debates in the workplace. We encourage them to vote because we want the maximum possible turnout. And if we do that and we get a positive result, it means that going forward, facing the incredible challenges that we are going to face from this government, we've got another thing at our disposal that can be used in order to try and defend ourselves. No public sector cuts! Job cuts, no way! Tax the bankers, make them pay!